Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay. Okay. Part two. I know I am... I still have the uh, 30 Years War and Caesar. Next videos on Kings and Generals to do. I will do that. I just wanted to do this one first. So, let's get into it. Continuing my journey to learn about British, British history. British history. Okay. Um, if you're new to the channel, hello. My name is Connor. How do you do? Um, I like to learn about history through YouTube recommendations and create a sort of, you know, watering hole, water bubbler. You know what I mean? That sort of atmosphere around history on uh, Discord and YouTube. The original link to this video will be at the top of the description below. Right below that would be Discord. Love for you to join. Pull up a chair. The more the merrier. Talk, don't talk, whatever. A lot of different uh, channels there. Topics to discuss. Yeah, love to have you. Okay, let's get into it. Ten minute English and British history. Number two, late Roman Britain. Let's do it. One ninety three is it? If you are not ready to learn, is it? Is the sound a bit weird, or is that just me? If you are not ready to learn. You're in the wrong class. Get out. Nobody wants you here. All right? Or just chill. That's fine, too. Let's go. 193, and Septimius Severus has just defeated his rivals and brought an end to the civil wars which were a part of the year of the five emperors. He was the first... 193, and Septimius Severus has just defeated his rivals and brought an end to the civil wars which were a part of the year of the five emperors. He was the first emperor of the Severan dynasty, and this dynasty saw a shift in how powerful the military was. During the Severan dynasty's rule, senators in Rome were sidelined in favor of generals called legati, who were now in charge of running many aspects of the empire. During the turmoil, Britain, or Britannia as it was known then, was subject to raids from north of Hadrian's Wall, so Emperor Severus paid a visit to Britain in 208 in order to conquer Caledonia once and for all. His arrival meant that Londinium and Ibaracum underwent major public work so that they could house the emperor and his imperial government. Severus went north, strengthened Hadrian's Wall and went campaigning in Caledonia, Despite heavy losses, Severus was victorious and by 210 he'd expanded Roman control to here. Roughly five seconds later, the Caledonians revolted against Roman rule and Severus prepared an- I just want to say I say this every every now and then. Of course, I created this YouTube channel. I want to make a nice um, environment for your, you guys, the reactors. I always like watching uh, people react to videos and I know a few things are annoying, like pausing right now, but I- if you told me, well, you couldn't really learn as well as you did before because you have to make sure you don't pause, I wouldn't do it. All right, I, I'm not doing this at the expense of me learning. I genuinely do want to learn. And so if I rewind a bit or if I miss something, I, I'm going to have to rewind and I will do so. Just giving you a heads up. Another campaign, but roughly five seconds later, the Caledonians revolted against Roman rule and Severus prepared another campaign, but fell ill shortly after it began. He returned to Ibaracum and died in 211. He was succeeded by his sons, Getter and Caracalla, the latter of which continued campaigning in Caledonia but eventually withdrew. Caracalla's campaign would be the last time Rome would advance beyond the Antonine Wall. Getter and Caracalla ruled as joint emperors, but Getter found himself somewhat murdered before the end of their first year and the empire went to Caracalla. Caracalla is most famous for two things. First, he was crazy, and second, he granted Roman citizenship to all free males, barring some exceptions, across the empire in 212. This brings an interesting point on how to refer to the people of Britannia during this period. Many historians use the term Romano-British since it recognizes them being Roman citizens but also doesn't diminish the fact that many outside of the towns were not Romanized. After Caracalla there was a period of stability until 235 when the Emperor Severus Alexander was assassinated which ushered in what is known as the 3rd century crisis. So, the crisis of the 3rd century was a period of about 50 years when generals would one after the other declare themselves or be declared emperor. The legions they commanded would march across the empire to defeat rival claimants. This was massively destabilizing and many provinces were ransacked by legions and often left defenseless from barbarian incursions. Britannia was slightly different in that there is little evidence for mass plundering and archaeological evidence shows that during the last few decades of the 3rd century many villas were still being built. 
Ultimately, the crisis is a very complex... I just want to say, Great Britain, uh, how great is the uh, English Channel, huh? I, I always say how awesome it is to have the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans as an American and then pretty uh, docile, non -very, not very threatening neighbors to our north and south. But how great is it to have that little separation between you and Europe uh, treated you very well um, to stop invasions and whatnot? decades of the third century, many villas were still being built. Ultimately, the crisis is a very complicated period, but needless to say it was extremely damaging, as evidenced by the fact it contained the year of the six emperors. During the crisis, Britannia often found itself split from the rest of the empire. Between 260 and 274, Britannia and Gallia were a part of a separate empire called the Gallic Empire, but it was eventually reconquered. A few decades later, a naval commander called Carousius declared himself the ruler of the Britannic Empire, which included roughly these lands. Carousius was assassinated by one of his own men, Electius, in 293, but Electius himself was defeated three years later by Caesar Constantius Chlorus, and Britannia was reincorporated into the empire. Wow, the crisis of, of the 3rd century was ended up. primarily by a man called Diocletian, who created a form of government called the Tetrarchy, meaning rule of four. That's a familiar the name. The empire was thus ruled by four emperors, two senior emperors called Augusti, and two junior emperors called Caesars, whom the empire was split between. Unlike the early empire, whereby there was some social mobility, such as rural farmers and artisans being able to move to urban centres, Diocletian made efforts to control the movement of people and skills. He did this by making ties to land and some jobs, such as being a soldier, hereditary. He also attempted to regulate prices on certain goods across the empire. In Britannia, the prices of beer and rugs were controlled in order to stabilise the economy, but this failed miserably since people just traded for these goods instead of using money. Everyone ignored it because starving sucks. Though, to be fair to Diocletian, nobody understood economic concepts such as inflation back then. Another one of Diocletian's reforms in Britannia was to divide it into four provinces from its previous two. These provinces were grouped into larger administrative units called dioceses, and it was run by Vicarius, which is the root of the word vicar. The reason for the splitting of the provinces was to make sure that it would be more difficult for the governors of these provinces to usurp the throne. So Constantius, having previously defeated Electius... What does vicar mean? Just one of those stupid things that's going to stick in my head. Okay. A vicar's representative, deputy, and substitute acting in the person of representative of deputy of... Okay, gotcha. ...to the word vicar. The reason for the splitting of the provinces was to make sure that it would be more difficult for the governors of these provinces to usurp the throne. So Constantius, having previously defeated Electius, returned to his duties as Caesar before his elevation to Augusti in 306. Constantius, like most emperors, wanted glory and so looked to a potential Milchie. conquest of Caledonia to provide it because all of the previous attempts had gone so swimmingly. Constantius went north of Hadrian's Wall and defeated the people who lived there called the Picts in battle. Unfortunately for him, he could not finish this conquest since he fell ill and had to return to York. Before he died, he recommended that his son, Constantine, be declared Augustus by the army after his death, which they did. It was easy for Constantine to be accepted. He's the one, did I say this? He's the one who made Christianity the official religion of the Roman Empire, right? His emperor, just by the army after his death, which they did. It was easy for Constantine to be accepted as emperor because much like during the reign of Septimius Severus, the Roman government had travelled to Britannia with Constantius. There was one problem with this though. There was already an agreed successor to Constantius, Flavius Severus, who was murdered in 307. So shockingly, once again, the Roman Empire was now in crisis. Constantine, through political manoeuvring and a fortunate victory at the Battle of the Milvian Bridge in 312, secured his position but not before his famous conversion to Christianity. Constantine managed right, to oust okay. the other emperors, and by 324 he was the sole ruler of the empire. Just because the sole emperor was Christian did not mean that the empire's provinces automatically became majority Christian. The process of Christianization in Britain was a slow one, but goes back much further than Constantine. There is little evidence for widespread Christianity before the 3rd century. One of the most famous Christian stories from Roman Britain is that of St. Alban, the first British Christian martyr. Long story short, Alban, or Albanus, sheltered a priest fleeing persecution and converted to Christianity. He was arrested and refused to abandon his new faith, and thus was beheaded at Verulamium, which bears the name St. Albans. Certainly though, by the mid-4th century, there was a sizable Christian population in Britain. So, Constantine died in 337, and the empire was split between his sons. Britannia went to Constantine II, who managed to swiftly get himself killed by his brother Constans, who then took over the western half of the empire. In 350, Constans took the time to be murdered after one of his generals, Magnentius. The amount of betrayal and killing going on right now is just hard to keep up with. Half of the empire. In 350, Constance needs water. The time to be
Okay. Over Constans, who then took over the western half of the empire. In 350, Constans took the time to be murdered after one of his generals, Magnentius, declared himself emperor and seized Constans' share. Magnentius would only reign for three years before being defeated by Constantine's last living son, Constantius. Because Magnentius had the support of Britain and Constantius believed many of his supporters had fled there, he ordered that they be hunted down. The man ordered to do this was a civil servant named Paulus. Paulus earned the nickname Catena, which is Latin for chain. This was due to Paulus' penchant for chaining suspects and dragging them through the streets. Oh. Paulus was only tasked with hunting nice the supporters guy. of Magnentius, but quickly began to prosecute notable families on trumped-up charges. Those found guilty were imprisoned, exiled, tortured, and notably had their property taken from them. An important guilty... Quickly became a corrupt spectacle which benefited Paulus and the Emperor. ...for chaining suspects and dragging them through the streets. Paulus was only tasked with hunting the supporters of Magnentius, but quickly began to prosecute notable families on trumped-up charges. Those found guilty were imprisoned, exiled, tortured, and notably had their property taken from them. An important side effect of the destruction of many wealthy families meant that public works such as city walls, roads, and temples were much less likely to be undertaken. Another major destructive event for Britain occurred in 367 in what is known as the Barbarian Conspiracy. This was a well-planned series of simultaneous attacks by different groups of people. Britannia was attacked by the Picts, the Atticotti, no one knows where they came from, and the Scots, who were from Ireland or Hibernia as the Romans referred to it then. Gaul was also attacked by the Franks and another group of people called the Saxons, who will become important shortly. These attacks, despite their ferocity, were thwarted by the General Theodosius, who subsequently oversaw the rebuilding of Britain's defences. Over the closing decades of the 4th century, Britain was involved in another imperial crisis. Shocking, I know. This was when a Roman general called Magnus Maximus defeated the Picts and declared himself emperor in 382 because everyone else did it, so, you know, why not? He was defeated by the Emperor Theodosius the Great in 394, who himself died the next year, which marks the permanent split between the east and western halves of the empire. I tell you, it's, it's videos like this that really make you appreciate the stability of any well-established civilization or empire in that it, it shows you at like the beginning of any nation obviously this is the beginning of british history just all of the crazy stuff that happened and all of the killing and fighting and if something changed the whole rest of the history of it could have changed and then finally you have you know a stable i mean i don't know if europe and it, just i hope i got my point across just how m much work it takes to to when there is, let me, let me say it this way, when there is a well-established empire or nation, it's easy to forget just how much fighting and turmoil had to happen for it to get there and how it could have been very easily changed. Over the next half a century, the Western Roman Empire, now under the rule of Emperor Honorius, was divided and strained by near-continuous civil strife and foreign invasions. In Britannia, this came in the form of the Picts and the Scots raiding down the coastlines. Much of what happened during the early 5th century is hard to determine, but it is certain that Rome, more accurately Ravenna, which was now the capital, began to lose its grip on the provinces, including Britannia. After 402, there is evidence for a massive slowdown in the imports of coinage from the rest of the empire into Britannia, which means that the soldiers and civil servants who worked there were being paid from local sources and not the central government. It should be remembered that it was not just the legions which relied on payments of coinage from the government, but also those who sold goods to the legions too. It goes without saying that any downturn in payments for the legions would result in an economic hit to the entirety of Britannia. Gotcha. In 406, Britannia saw a quick succession of three usurpers to the imperial throne, because why only have economic collapse when you can have revolt too? At this point, the central Roman government couldn't respond very well since they were busy being overrun by barbarians. The final usurper, called Constantine III, declared himself emperor in 407 and was quite successful. He conquered Gaul and Hispania from Honorius and pushed back the Germanic invaders. In order to do this, he withdrew most of the military from Britannia, leaving it pretty much defenceless. The Picts, the Scots and the Saxons leapt on this weakness by launching devastating raids. The civil administration of Britannia wrote to Emperor Honorius asking to be allowed to arm themselves to fight off the invaders, which he granted in what is known as the 410 Rescript of Honorius. Some consider this rescript as the Romans abandoning Britannia to its own fate. It should be remembered that the people of Britannia were still Roman citizens and many of those who lived in the cities would have identified as such. It is likely that to Honorius, him granting permission for citizens to arm themselves was a temporary measure and not the abandonment of a province which had been part of the empire for nearly 400 years. 
So this rearmament worked at first and the Romano-British were able to win some victories. However, after continued raiding, economic downturn and the collapse of the civil administration, Britannia fell into chaos. This economic downturn can be seen in many ways. Pottery production came to a crashing halt, coinage and a money-based economy continued to decline, urban centres were depopulated and countryside villas were no longer being built. Without a functioning economy, there was no way to pay the administration or the army, and without anything to hold the provinces together, Britannia fractured and would never again be under Roman jurisdiction. I hope you enjoyed this episode and thank you for watching. There are some recommended... Thank you for making. Awesome video, wrapping up the Roman era of uh, Roman-controlled Britain. Makes me excited to uh, get, in, get into the next episode. I won't do it. I won't make it my next video or even the video after that. Maybe the one after that. Because I, I have some other series that... um. I have to finish. Yeah, great video. Hope you guys are doing well. If not, you'll be good soon. Don't worry. See you next time.